Trudeau is promising to bring 20,000 Afghan refugees to Canada. There's been no detail on how or when. An international crisis unfolding at exactly the moment Trudeau kicks off a campaign. It is a reminder how events can quickly overtake political strategy. And the big question today is if Justin Trudeau is so confident in the strength and smarts of his government, why not continue with the mandate Canadian voters gave him 17 months ago? Why call an election now? David Aiken has our top story tonight. David? Well, Donna, that was the first and second and third thing Justin Trudeau was asked this morning, why now? And his answer each time was, why not now? So in this pivotal, consequential moment, who wouldn't want to say? Who wouldn't want their chance to help decide where our country goes from here? The Trudeau minority government had been governing just fine with the support most often of the NDP and sometimes the Bloc Québécois. That was not enough, apparently, for the Liberals. This is a moment in which Canadians deserve to have their voices heard. Canadians deserve to make their choices. And like I said, I'll leave it for the others to explain why they don't think Canadians should get to weigh in in this extraordinarily consequential historic moment. But the most consequential factor for Liberal strategists are polls, polls that show the Liberals with a lead. This is the best chance since 2015 that they have to actually get a majority again. So you can see what the motivation is. The numbers are there uh, for them to at least seriously consider it. Those strategists may also have concluded this would be the Liberals' only opportunity for months. When would be better? When is another window, right? And, you know, if Delta variant is, is starting to creep up, it, we know now, we've been through it before, it's going to get worse in the fall. So that's not going to be a window. The winter, it's certainly not. So, you know what I mean? Like, you start to narrow down your choices, and um, I, I think that they would be uh, uh, crazy not to go. One note on all this, John Horgan called a snap election in a pandemic in B.C., and he went from minority to majority. New Brunswick's Blaine Higgs did the same thing. A pandemic election went from minority to majority. Justin Trudeau will surely be hoping that he will complete the pandemic electoral hat trick. Donna? Okay, David Aiken in Ottawa, thanks. Well, the leader of the official opposition kicked off his campaign quietly today. Aaron O'Toole unveiled his campaign slogan from an empty hotel ballroom. His message, secure the future. Abigail Beeman joins us from the hotel where O'Toole is holding what are called virtual town halls this afternoon. Abigail, a different kind of campaign launch. Donna, this is essentially a TV studio the Conservatives built and have been using for months now. They plan to continue using it during the campaign, replacing some traditional on-the-road campaign events. And kicking things off in a big empty room allowed Aaron O'Toole to underline his message criticizing Justin Trudeau's election timing. A leader who cared about the best interests of Canadians would be straining every sinew to secure the recovery right now. Instead, Justin Trudeau has called an election. Whether he wanted a campaign or not, it's only day one and already O'Toole is setting up a wedge issue. Friday, the Liberal government announced mandatory vaccinations for the federal public service, federally regulated industries and commercial air, rail and cruise passengers. In his first question and answer session with reporters, O'Toole was asked over and over about his opinions on the government's mandatory vaccine announcement and on vaccine passports. He didn't give very clear answers. I think we can also have an approach that uses a whole suite of health measures from rapid testing and screening mask usage to have reasonable accommodations uh, for people that may not be vaccinated, whether young children or, or, or other people. We have to use all of the tools and not divide Canadians. O'Toole completely avoided the question of whether he requires candidates to be vaccinated. Some of his supporters are opposed to mandatory vaccinations and he's trying to tread carefully. But one of his challenges this campaign is to set himself apart from previous leader Andrew Scheer to attract more Canadians to his party. He's already falling into a trap that caught Scheer, evading a question, so reporters are forced to keep trying to get a clear answer. We'll see if that changes in the days ahead. 
O'Toole defended his decision to have a campaign kickoff in an empty room by saying technology allows him to connect with thousands of voters. He's holding two virtual town halls Sunday with voters in B.C. and Quebec. All of this COVID campaigning is new, of course, but we'll have to see whether he can build traction with less time on the road, fewer chances to meet people in person. For a leader, many Canadians say they still don't feel they know. Donna? All right, Abigail Beeman in Ottawa, thanks. The NDP leader calls this election a selfish attempt by Justin Trudeau at a power grab. Jagmeet Singh's NDP won just 24 seats last time, its worst result in years. Singh is confident his party has the campaign war chest and the right message to make a bigger mark this time. Michael Couture is on the NDP campaign. NPD! NPD! This is the image the NDP wanted. While Justin Trudeau was in Ottawa talking to candidates, Jagmeet Singh walked with the people in Montreal's Pride Parade. Singh says sending Canadians to the polls as COVID-19 cases continue to rise is a selfish move by the Liberal leader. Well, it's clear Justin Trudeau wants to grab power, wants a majority. But why does he want a majority? It's certainly not because he wants to help more people. Now, Singh's opposition to the federal election is a stark contrast to last year when he campaigned with John Horgan in B.C., helping him convert his minority government into a majority. Singh says Trudeau triggered the election because he's tired of the NDP, pushing them to do better for Canadians. People are worried. And, and they're still concerned about what this pandemic means for them, their jobs, and their, and their future. Now, last week, the NDP released a blueprint for its platform, including major policy planks like universal pharmacare and dental care, something they plan to pay for with a tax on the ultra-rich. Singh is trying to convince Canadians the NDP is the best option after he says the Liberals failed to deliver on some campaign promises over the last six years, like ending boil water advisories in all Indigenous communities. Why should we believe that he's going to deliver what we ask for now? If he wants to do what people are asking for, let's go back to Ottawa and do it. There's no reason why we can't. The NDP admits the 2019 campaign was all about limiting the number of ridings they expected to lose. But this one couldn't be more different. With better poll numbers and double the budget compared to the last election, the hope is to add up to a dozen new seats to the 24 they already hold. Donna? All right, Mike Lecouture in Montreal, thanks.